I'm with Tom Donahue, Chamber President and CEO. So let's talk about this. You've had some major companies uh, break with the Chamber. I, I want to read to you a quote from Peter Darby, CEO of PG&E. They broke with the Chamber. He accused you all of using extreme rhetoric and obstructionist tactics over climate change. Well, we have 300,000 members and we've lost four members. If you have that many members, have a hundred people on the board, you're never going to have unanimity in what people believe. It is fair also to point out that the people that left were pressured uh, by folks in the environmental community and others who don't like our position on climate. And here's our position. We want a bill in the United States and we want a global agreement. We want a bill that makes sense and that bill shouldn't have things in it that would put tariffs on every foreign product coming in from China or India or any place that we don't think is, are dealing well in the environment. We think one ought to look very, very carefully at some of the other components and the cost of this bill. Well, let, let me ask you then, because there's been a question certainly raised by some folks within the chamber uh, about the science of climate change, the underlying science. Uh, you know well that one of your folks compared uh, maybe the science putting it on a, a Scopes monkey trial. So let's be clear. Well, let's be clear. Do you all believe in the underlying science that the earth is getting warmer and that human action is causing that? Now you're talking to the guy that runs the chamber. We are not questioning the science. And the only reason we went to the EPA and asked for a, a, a visit and a hearing on the, the information, the data they're using, is the president, the Congress, the chamber, and most companies don't want the EPA to do an endangerment ruling with rules that are not meant for CO2. And that's why we did that. We are not questioning the science. We want a bill. We want a global agreement as well. And some people are not going to like what we're doing because maybe they have a great advantage in this bill or maybe they're pressured by others to put pressure on us. You're going to see that not only in environment but in, in the legal issues and questions on, on the economic bills and on health care. We're serious players and we are obviously going to be pressed if we're successful. Well, could you all sign on with what you see coming out of, we have a bill passed by the House, there is a bill under consideration in the Senate, they're working on it now. Could you all sign on to the Markey-Waxman uh, legislation? Nobody knows what the Markey-Waxman legislation is. There have been a number of senators, uh, led by Senator Kerry, who have come out with a, a memorandum in the last number of days that have a lot of encouraging things in it. Some things we'd have to deal with. But this is, you know how legislation is made. It's like making sausage. Until you see the sausage, you're not going to buy it. And so we're in the process of what stays in and what comes out, starting every day with the issue that we want a bill, and we want a bill that works and doesn't contribute to bankrupting the country and putting people out of work, and that really does something on the climate side, and we will continue to work for it. Well, well let me ask you then about another topic that you've been very involved in, the financial regulatory overhaul. You all spent reportedly about $2 million on the Stop the CFPA campaign. That's the Consumer Financial Protection Agency. Uh, the president wants that in the bill. There's a slightly watered down version in Barney Frank's bill. Tell me what the bottom line is for you. Should there be a CFPA? The bottom line is we abs absolutely need re-regulation of the financial industry, particularly in areas where there is no re-regulation, no re regulation, and in areas where it's over levered and we need to get somebody that's really in charge. A consumer uh, protection agency, as originally envisioned, uh, had a lot of silly stuff in it. Now, Barney's taken some of that out. There are still issues that we have to negotiate, and he is committed to working until we get something everybody agrees with. We will be very supportive on a lot of these issues. The question of too big to fail and, and systemic re risk and other those, those things are going to require some more discussion. Well, we got about 20 seconds left, but I got to ask you, obviously, health care has been the hot topic in D.C. Can you sign on to some version of the Bacchus bill? Uh, the Barkas bill is going to be taken by the majority leader and put together with the Kennedy bill. And then three bills are being put together over in the House, and they're going to put those all in one bill. When you tell me what it is, I'll tell you what we think. <laughs> all right, Tom Donahue, thank you very much. Well, I'm sure we'll talk to you again because you all are very influential in all these things.